You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Oh, 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 oh yeah, here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I've been, um, you know, turning everything off at night so I can get some rest and whatnot and um, turn on my phone this morning and I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Um, my dear brother, um, who sent that beautiful hymn. Thank you. Dearly, dearly beloved. Thank you. Um, but, Swan woke up to, to see this. And you, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. But, I want to read something very quick for you. Uh, we're going to be in the scriptures and just kind of, this is a very impromptu video, just by, uh, just to tell you. I'm going to share something with you from The Art of War, Sun Tzu, apparently. Um, I am going to be reading uh, from 18 on to 25. Right here, I hope you can see that. I got this thing in front of me so we can go through it. 18 on the ver on to 25 here where my finger is. Okay, I hope you can see that. This is from uh, the Art of War, Sun Tzu. Did Sun Tzu in BC write this? I don't know. Friend once said that. Um, wouldn't be surprised if the Jesuits actually wrote this and attributed it to Sun Tzu. I would not be surprised. But nonetheless, this is what is going on today. Right now as we speak. And it's really interesting to just sit there, sit back and watch these Catholic coadjutors squirm. Especially, I, I told y'all a little while ago that December would be the month in where these devils would make a big push. saying I'm just saying but check this out all warfare is based on deception like these King James Bible believing Christians who uh, allow and have fellowship with the Knight of Columbus Hey, you. Yeah, you're going to reap all your fruit at the great uh, white throne of judgment there, Catholic boy. <laughs> An enemy of mine, even, who, um, who is a Texas Receptus only guy, even he, who doesn't like me at all, but even he had enough sense to point out to everybody, it's like, uh, hey, hey, th this, what, what are you guys doing? This guy's a Catholic. This guy's a Catholic. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. <laughs> Hold out baits to entice the enemy. Feign disorder and crush him. If he is secure at all points... Be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is of chloric temper, easily irritated, seek to irritate him. And it doesn't really take much to irritate these uh, Catholic coadjutors. It doesn't take much to irritate them at all. Attack what they uh, hold most precious. You'll see them come out with fangs and claws. Yeah. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Which the enemies want to do right now. Through, oh, crowd manipulation. Gaslighting tactics. 
it, it, it's so obvious. It's so plainly obvious what these people are doing, brethren. Hmm. Attack him where he is unprepared. I don't know about y'all, but I was ready for all this. I was very ready. I told y'all I was ready. Didn't I tell you, devils, bring it on, right? Because I was ready, yeah. Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. These military devices, oh, military, de uh, military devices, military order, like the Jesuit order, leading to victory must not be divulged beforehand. Just like in the Secreta Monita, where they talk about uh, if their secret instructions are ever found, that they are to be denied, that they're theirs, and label them as Protestant propaganda or whatever nonsense. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And let's go to familiar, familiar verses. But meet for what we're going to look at. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 18 on to verse 25. Remember. Remember this, brethren. We're surrounded by the enemy. Catholics. We're surrounded by Catholics. We're surrounded by devil coadjutors of the Jesuit order working for the Vatican. Remember that. Don't forget that. Okay? Tis the season to be Catholic. <laughs> Not going to go there. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 18 on to verse 25. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope, that say, let him make speed, and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil. <laughs> that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. That's in the cup of the mother of harlots. <laughs> Which justify the wicked. For reward, thinking gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. We'll look at that here in a little bit. And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, corrupt, putrid. Stankin. And their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against this people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. <laughs> Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. I, I was, like I said, I turned everything on this morning, my phone and whatnot, everything, and um, greeted to our Lord's blessings but then I looked at this, and this was sent to me by a dear friend. And it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> Get a fire going underneath my buttocks this morning. So, um, yeah, we're going to go through this. We're going we're gonna to go through this. <laughs> All right, and the link for this will be in the description box. Getting... <laughs> Getting COVID booster follows...
Teaching of Jesus Christ, says Boris Johnson. I don't know who this Boris Johnson guy is. I'm assuming he's from um, something to do with you Englishmen. I'm assuming if I'm wrong, forgive me. I don't know who this guy is. But let's check this out. Okay. <laughs> Boris Johnson has invoked the teaching of Jesus Christ to urge the public to get a COVID booster jab. You coadjutor devils, you gonna burn, you gonna burn, you gonna burn. It's one thing to be ignorant. It's one thing to serve the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do not, yeah, yeah. I do not envy this man's position. In a message issued to mark a Christmas, he said would be significantly better than last year's. Mm -hmm. In a video statement filmed in front of a Christmas tree in Downing Street, of course, and you want to go ahead and yoke up with this, huh? Okay. The Prime Minister celebrated members of the public who were getting jabbed, not just for themselves. For ourselves, but for friends and family, and everyone we meet. The Lord had me to do two videos, actually, addressing this very thing. They will be in the description box of this video, okay? Uh, one video is, it's the Christian thing to do, and the other one, uh, would you do so, or something like that. They will be in the description box of this video, okay? That after all, is the teaching of Jesus Christ. Whose birth is at the heart of this enormous festival. <laughs> that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. He said, you this Boris Johnson. The Lord rebuke you, you filthy devil, you wicked, pond scum, coadjutor devil. Who do you think you are? Oh, oh, <laughs> his words echoed the message from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Church of England. So, yeah. Justin Welby, who said earlier this week, I would say, go and get boosted, get vaccinated. It's how. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm really trying to compose myself, brethren. It's how we love our neighbor. Loving our neighbor is what Jesus told us to do. It's Christ's mass. Do what he said. Yeah, go take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. As VMAT2 inhibitors in it that affect your pineal gland. With all the toxins that are in it. That doesn't keep you from getting anything. Which is basically a weapon of depopulation. Remember, it's been in circulation now for over a year here in America. According to the animal trials, uh, which Eric John Phelps did a whole thing on, um, according to these animal trials, these people got, what is it, three to five years tops. 
Yeah. Do what he said. Do what he said. If Jesus would hear, he would have you just take the steel of the Jesuit upon you. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Turn in your authorizer. Okay, let's see where we're at right here. Okay, where, where, where he said we're... Go to Mark. Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Let's read verses 28 on to verse 40. Mark chapter 12, come on. Verses 28 on to verse 40. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Okay. Now, notice they're pointing out, love your neighbor as yourself. What aren't they first saying first? Okay. This guy, you know, invoking the teachings of Jesus, love your neighbor as yourself. What comes before that? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, one God, not three gods or three divine persons. What is a person? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Uh, one God, which is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You read the context of 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, you know, the Johannian comma. The context of that proves to you that God is one, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three divine persons, because a person is a spirit, soul, and body, not three divines per, divine persons that make one God. That's Catholic, that's Satanic, and hey, uh, to hell with your Trinity. Okay? Yeah. And remember, the teaching of the Catholic Trinity is significant for during the time of Jacob's trouble. The dragon, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet there's your Trinity. And the Trinity, the Satanic Catholic Trinity, will be on the earth <laughs> during the time of Jacob's trouble, God's wrath upon earth. But let's continue. The first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Tell me, does, do you think this Boris Johnson or whatever his name is loves the Lord our God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength? What about this, this Canterbury dude, huh? Hmm? These people who are using love your neighbor as yourself, there's something that comes before that. Loving the Lord our God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, and all of that, okay? But see, when you have a God that is three divine persons that make one, you're not loving the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. You're not loving the true God, okay? And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Hold your place here. Go to Mark chapter, or well, no, 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 no. Matthew, excuse me. Matthew chapter 16. Oh, wait. Well, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm misreading my notes. Like I said, this, was, this is very impromptu. Matthew chapter 7. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, okay? Beg your pardon. Really, go to Matthew chapter 7. The Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon of the Mount on the Mount. Which is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven. 
that thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he is ruling and reigning on the throne from Jerusalem. That is when the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount are going to be implemented. Faith is mentioned one time during the Sermon on the Mount, and it's mentioned in a form of a rebuke. Okay? This is how it's going to be during the Kingdom of Heaven, which these coadjutors who work for the Vatican are not going to be there for. Okay? So, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 12. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, get a load of this. Of what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Remember this in context of loving your neighbor as yourself. Okay? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? The golden rule. See, unto Catholicism, the golden rule is, he who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> but the true golden rule is... Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. I'll give you an example. When we listen to hymns, okay, we don't blast them so loud that it affects our neighbors. On that point, our neighbors will play their televisions and their music, that thumpity thumpity, to affect us. We will not do things outwardly, of course, to offend our neighbors because we live peaceably by them. Okay? Do unto others as they would have you to do unto them. That kind of thing. Okay? But see, here's the thing. When it comes on to the steel of the Jesuit poniard, and a lot of the stuff that they are conveniently not telling you about, which you can still find if you know what you're looking for. The algorithm hasn't totally erased all the truth yet. But um, when it comes to the steel of the Jesuit poniard, I would not want you to put any... You would be... It would be better for you to start smoking cigarettes than for you to go ahead and get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. I wouldn't wish... I wouldn't wish the steel of the Jesuit poniard upon that sweet night of Columbus or Beelzebub of Blackpool. I wouldn't wish that on them. And those are my enemies. I wouldn't wish that on them. I wouldn't wish that upon you. Okay? It affects nothing, but eventually it's going to affect the population. These people, and again, like I said, love your neighbor as yourself. What comes before loving your neighbor as yourself? They're quoting the teachings of Jesus. What comes before that? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Let's continue. Verse 32 in Mark chapter 12. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, spiritual and body, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, 
Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. He wasn't there yet, but not far. And no man after that durst ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool? David therefore calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Now see, when he's talking about his son, me, when he is referred to as the son of David, that is reference unto him as king. Okay? Him as king. He is not David's son. He is David's son, meaning by kingship. Because who brought the body, the word made flesh, who brought that into being? The Lord, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, who was over Mary, and then God was manifest. This is really impossible for these Catholics to get, and this irritates them so very much. Hey, yeah, and then you see them coming out in droves right now over this. God was manifest in the flesh. I mean, when you look at that in 1 John chapter 4, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Word was made flesh. But see, again, people, See, these guys are saying, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. But what comes before that? Which they're not, they're missing. Because they serve the Trinity. Three divine persons that make one God. But yet you, you say you serve three gods. No, we serve one God. You're crazy. You're crazy. Clock in London. You're nuts! Boo! So, let's continue. And he said unto them in his doctrine, at verse uh, 38, Beware of the scribes, those who wrote the law, who wrote the scriptures and stuff like that. And who writes a lot of these Bibles today? <laughs> Catholics, the Vatican. Who wrote the scriptures? God. Through the hand of, uh, of man, yes. But who is the author of the scriptures? God. Who are the authors of the Bibles? The Vatican. Okay. Beware of the scribes who say, Yea, hath God said which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts. This is describing Jesuits, Catholics. I know context, that's not what it is, but I mean in our instruction and in righteousness. Bloop, hello. Which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. Hail Mary, full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the loom. <laughs> These shall receive the greater damnation. And in the Sacrita Monita, when you read about or hear about how they go, up, how the Jesuits go after widows, which devour widows' houses. Uh, there's an audio book, which I did, which wasn't really the best, but effective. Um, the Lord had me to read the Secreta Monita to show you people, you know, who won't go to the link or won't get it. I'll put the link for that audio book in the description box of this as well. Okay. And listen to that if you can get past, you know, I'll 
it's not perfect by any means. I ain't saying it is. But when it comes to how the Jesuits go after widows, devour widows' houses. See, the Lord would not have you to put poison in you in order to protect other people. No, natural immunization, building your immune system. And besides, you have to remember all of this, all of this is a Jesuit created psychological operation. Corona, crown, delta, okay, corona, crown, what does that say there, delta, triangle, omicron, I, you see that? In God we trust, one, right? <laughs> right? Okay? On a Jesuit Federal Reserve uh, note, the Eye of Horus, the pyramid, the Eye of Horus up there. Nothing to see here. Okay. We have the crown, we have the pyramid, and we have the eye of Horus. The uh, singular crown as worn by the son of perdition going on a white horse and having a bow with no arrows, huh? But he has a single crown. The pyramid, Delta, and the Omicron. I. I wonder what the uh, what the fourth one is going to be. I bet you, and I'm not a betting man, but I bet you, I bet you, we're we're up to three right now. I bet you, I bet you, they'll come up with six of these. I bet you. Betcha. You watch. We're up we're up to three right now, and I don't know how they're going about it. It has something to do with the constellation and the stars or whatever. But you you, you watch, I bet you they'll come up with six of them. You watch. You watch. I bet you. I bet you. Okay. I bet you. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. Okay. Uh, let's continue this. I'm sorry for that little rabbit trail. Okay. Oops, 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 oops. I went all the way up to the top here. All right. Um, let's see. We read up to where it said the Archbishop of Canterbury. Okay, let's continue. The Prime Minister, who I'm, I'm assuming is this, this Johnson guy. The Prime Minister said he could not say the pandemic was over. And you know what? I don't think it's ever going to be over until we, the Church of the Living God, are resurrected, redeemed, caught up, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed. I believe that the pandemic is going to stay around until we are caught up. We're getting really close. We're getting really close. The Prime Minister said he could not say the pandemic was over, but pointed out that many people were able to celebrate with more family members this year than last. And... What is this video? Christmas is on. No tougher COVID measures before Xmas amid Omicron surge, Boris Johnson says Evening Standard. We're not going to watch this video on that. Thank you very little. If this year you need a bigger turkey and there are more sprouts to peel and more washing up to do, then that is all to the good. Because these rituals matter so deeply. And I hope that people will enjoy this Christ Mass 
this year all the more keenly because of what we had to miss last year, he said. Leave it alone, brethren. Okay? Leave it alone. We got things to deal with, okay? There had been fears the government might impose limits on socializing over the festive period in a bid to slow the spread of the highly transmissible Omicron, which is the eye of Horus. The eye sees everything, right? Spreads so rapidly. Uh, remember that satanic movie, Lord of the Rings, with the eye of Sauron? Predictive programming, people. Hello? <clears throat> There had been fears the government might impose limits on socializing over the festive period in a bid to slow the spread of the highly transmissible Omicron variant. But ministers, but ministers decided to wait and monitor the data. I gotta mention this. This holiday that's coming up is one of two of the big, big mamas to Catholicism. Okay, and, and look, look, this pot had been purposely stirred needlessly. I'm not going to stir it anymore, but I, I... Why... Why join yourself with them? Why, I don't, I don't understand it. That's between you and the Lord. Like I've always said. But. It's between you and the Lord. Okay. But this. Like I said. This is one of two of the big mamas. To, because Rome is Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Um, this is one of the two big mamas. Onto um, Catholicism. And I would not be surprised. To find out that. That man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. The Antichrist does not appear in Scripture. I don't care how long everybody's been referring to him as the Antichrist. Okay? Not in there. Um, I would not be surprised to learn that the son of perdition were born on December 25th. Or one of the predominant Catholic holidays. I would not come be surprised to find that out. Okay? In 2020, some parts of the country, including London, the home countries, and the east of England, were placed under Tier 4 restrictions just days before Christmas. That meant a stay-at-home order was in place. Everywhere, elsewhere, up to three, three households could gather, but only for a single day. Get this out of there. That's the scrap me. Because, <laughs> yeah, we are, on, uh, the whole world is under a Catholic papal interdict. The NHS, I don't know what that stands for, has accelerated the pace of booster vaccinations significantly since the arrival of the I. And in some parts of the country, and in some parts of the country, will continue to deliver jabs even on Christmas Day. Johnson was back. You're gonna. I'm gonna leave the link for you. <laughs> England says no Catholic shall sit upon the throne openly. Oh, dear Englishman. You, you remember, historically, the Jesuits wanted your nation even above ours. The Jesuit has, the Jesuit has America. And the Jesuit has your, your precious England too. To all my true English brethren. Okay, not you Catholic coadjutors and Jesuits. Okay, but look at that. 
Johnson was baptized a Catholic, but has rarely discussed his own religion. What do you think he's doing right now? He married his wife, Carrie, at the Catholic Westminster Cathedral earlier this year when ITV's Robert Peston asked if he was a practicing Catholic. Johnson replied, I don't discuss these deep issues. Wasn't there an American president who said, oh no, that's, that's personal. I don't talk about personal things. There are some in my nation who really believe that Trump is this man of God. Trump was trained at Fordham University. Okay? He was Jesuit trained. He's a 33rd degree Freemason. How do you get out of such bankruptcy problems as Trump did and then come to be the President of the United States? Okay. The labor leader, Carl Starmer, used his Christ Mass message to mark the contribution of frontline workers, including soldiers and nurses, during what he called an incredibly difficult year. For too many, there will be one less chair at the table for Christ Mass for the Christ Mass meal. What? The Eucharist? But in the darkest of times, Christian values of kindness, of compassion and hope have shown through. Communities have come together to help one another, he said. Looking forward to 2022. Yeah, Stammer said. If we stick together, support each other, and work together to build a temple that reacheth on to heaven, we can find a path through. I know a better future is possible. Yeah, for all of you who are lost, who are going to be left behind. Yeah, a better future when that man of sin, the son of perdition, comes onto the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I believe that's, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Okay, enough of this tomfoolery. Okay, now I beg your pardon, brethren. Uh, here, let me, let me. Whoa! Uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. Uh, what did I do here? What did I do here? Beg your pardon, brethren. This is not, uh, <laughs> there. Ah! Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, there. Okay, get your... There we go. There we go. Something like that. There! Something like that, okay? <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah. This is what I woke up to this morning. Our Lord's incredible mercies, yes. But, yeah. Turn in your authorized version now to Psalm... 21. This was part of my devotional reading that I spent with the Lord this morning. Psalm 21. Oh, you have the marker in here, you idiot. Okay. Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Do you rejoice in God's salvation? Do you rejoice that as unworthy as you are, the Lord has saved you by his grace? You know, this morning in prayer, it's like, Lord, I don't, why, why, would, why would you save me? I'm a sinful man, Lord. Why would you call me to such a calling? Why would you do anything for me? The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice in thy salvation, his salvation, by grace through faith. 
Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Shilah. And see, these charismatics will say, Believe and receive! <laughs> if you uh, can conceive it, you can achieve it. You can speak things into existence, right? <laughs> uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all thy ways. Do you find yourself sometimes picking and choosing where you're going to go to the Lord on? Do you ever find yourself saying, I've got this? That says, in all thy ways. That means from going to the mailbox and resting and doing whatever, not in the ways that you just want to apply. In all thy ways. All is a big word. Words do have meaning. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. From the mighty unto the mundane. But do you pick and choose when, get a load of this, when you decide to apply the Lord. You, did you hear what I just said? Yeah, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? In all thy ways, acknowledge him. It's not frivolous to do so. It's what we're commanded to do. Did we not already look at what our Lord said? To love the Lord your, our God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength? In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And what, what will happen if you do that? And he shall direct thy paths. Did you acknowledge him when you turn on the video game console? Did you acknowledge him when you put in the earbuds to listen to some devilish music? Hmm? Did you acknowledge him when you put the DVD player on and watch that Hollywood movie? Did you acknowledge him when you repaid evil for evil? Hi. See, that brings to light when Paul says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? How many of us have read Romans chapter 7, but yet don't really get the deeper meaning of what it means, Romans chapter 7? Is that you? Or no, is it absolved by your Jesuit priest and because you ingested a cookie? In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And you know what? That usually speaks against your own personal comfort. Sure does. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. First Timothy. First Timothy. Chapter one. No, Second Timothy, chapter one. Excuse me. Second Timothy, chapter one, verses three on to verse seven. Giving you the desires of your hearts. If you acknowledge God in all your ways, He will do, He will guide your path. So, are the desires of your heart match up to Scripture? Or are they just a little too carnal? Are they just a little too worldly? And see, that is what they are playing on with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Go back to normal. But yet, you're not going back to normal, are you? Because remember, Sosa himself said, we cannot go back to normal. We can't go back to what we were. And what were we all? 
before this? What was this world before the Jesuits instituted this? See, they've gone way too far to go back to anything now. This is how it's going to be until we, the church of the living God, get redeemed. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 7. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. So see, Timothy was brought up in the faith from a youth. Okay? Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. And see, when you have God inside you, that circumcision made without hands, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, which is associated with the fear of the world, fear of man, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My wife and I have run in, within our own family, we have run into, met people who are totally captivated by the religion of the poison crown psychological operation created by the Jesuits. These people do not have a sound mind. Their love is based off of covetousness. They fear man. They don't fear the Lord. And 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. You know, where it says, how we looked at here, and ha ah, got the ribbon marker here, where it says in um, verse 2, thou has, in Psalm 21, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips. Why? Because he rejoiced in his salvation, feared the Lord. First John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God wants you to have a Mercedes and millions of dollars. Uh, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. God want, will kill all your enemies who, uh, who uh, attack you. They will get theirs, but it's not up to us to uh, wish a curse on someone. Uh, because if we, as his children, wish a curse on someone, and the Lord see that and displease him and turn away his judgment from them, yeah. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. How do you learn what God's will is? Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. And don't rely on the tradition of Catholics. Oh, excuse me, tradition of men. And if we know he, that he hear us, whatsoever we ask and according with his will... We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Hmm. You know, you can think you, when you're asking the Lord for something in prayer, you might think that you have the most noblest intentions. But are your noble intentions that you think so noble, are they just to glorify yourself? Or truly to glorify the Lord? Like these millionaire Christians. I'm a millionaire. First one to tell you. And they do all this charitable stuff to make themselves look good. Whereas if they were truly doing the work of the Lord, you wouldn't even know it. See, that's why when it comes to people who give gifts unto others of the Church of the Living God, 
That is why you don't make mention of them, because then you will have your reward. If I were to sit here and name all of you who have helped us, you would have your reward. And you got to watch that about saying, well, I give to this, to so-and-so. You need to be quiet about that, or else you're going to have your reward. Okay? You're doing the work of the Lord by helping others, uh, or whatever, whether it by giving gifts, uh, by helping with uh, financially, prayer, whatever it is. Keep that quiet. Because the minute you start talking about it, you have something to boast about. And then the attention, instead of being on the Lord in secret, it goes to you openly. Watch that. Watch that. Okay, let's continue. Psalm 21. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Remember when Nabal and his uh, servants, you know, David uh, protected Nabal's cattle and stuff like that. And um, Nabal sent his servants away and uh, Abigail went to David because when David heard that Nabal was like, who are you? I'm not going to help you out even though you helped me out. I'm not going to help you out. You turned against Saul, right? Well, David, um, I, that's in, um, I, I didn't get that as a note on notes. But uh, what was David's reaction? He was going to go kill Nabal. But Abigail, or what was it? Oh, I forget what her name was. But she went to David and said, like, hey, here, here's stuff for your men. Don't go and kill Nabal. The Lord prevented David from going and taking vengeance on the ball. So, for thou preventest him with the blessing of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. You got to watch, brethren. When you feel upon yourself, like, I got to go get even with this guy. I got to go take care of things here myself. It's not up for you, up to you to get vengeance. It's up to the Lord. And, um, like my dear brother who has a beautiful voice and ought to share that voice with others sent us a hymn that he had done and last night I, I, I realized it's like you, you send in that hymn brother God, the Lord used you a lot more than you realized with that love you okay but also too go to Psalm, uh, Proverbs 30 okay Proverbs 30 Verses 7 on to verse 9. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Why? Lest I be full and deny thee. I'm a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, you sure are, aren't you? Yeah, you the first one to say so. And say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Paul talks about in the book of Philippians that, but my God shall provide all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Your need. So when you start stealing because you think you have a need, remember, wants are many, needs are few. You're taking the name of our God in vain. Why? Because you're not trusting him to provide for you. See? For thou preventest him, back in Psalm 21, for thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of, length of days forever and ever. And how did King Hezekiah repay those days that he gave unto him when he cried unto the Lord? He gave him 15 more, 15 more years, right? What happened uh, in those 15 years? King Manasseh, but you ask life of the Lord, he'll give it to you. Life to serve him. 
His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. Upon who? Jesus Christ, God our Father. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Do you delight in his commandments or only what you want to accept? His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man sheweth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance before the Lord, of course. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Your judgment is coming, you wicked Catholics. All you coadjutors. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it. And be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth. Oh yeah, they sure do. And melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. The desire of the wicked shall perish. And and and, and what and what is that? What is that in um? What is that in John, chapter nine? John chapter 9? No, no, not John chapter 9. Um, oh, I forget. Uh, John chapter 19. What is that in John chapter 19? Verse 11. Jesus answered. Thou couldest do, thou couldest have no power at all against me, except that were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Okay? Now, go to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. Verses 11 on to verse 17. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall gather sure, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Yeah. These devils they're claiming to be doing God's service. Yeah. Little G God of this world. Yeah. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, 
and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, Seth, the Lord. Not of you by what you do, by your belief that you're a good person, or that you got rid of all this stuff, then the Lord granted you repentance. Give me a break. Give me a break. Verse 8 in Psalm 21. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you want to get a Catholic to come out of his cupboard? Attack their doctrines that they hold most precious and watch them come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Isaiah 29, of course, verses 13 on to verse 16. Not Proverbs 20. I'm sorry. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29, <laughs> verses 13 on to verse 16. Like I said, this is an impromptu video. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men, Catholics, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely... Your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Stirring all this stuff and it's like, yeah, surely your turning of things upside down, you devils, shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, which is broken in an instant. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? You're going to give an account of yourself at the great white throne of judgment, unless the Lord save you. And with a lot of you coadjutors, unfortunately, I doubt that's going to happen. 1 Timothy chapter 6, of course. 1 Timothy chapter 6. <laughs> you know, just sitting there watching them come out. Just, to, just like kind of knew they would. <laughs> yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 and verse 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, separation, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. See, right away, like I've talked to you a lot before, you immediately think gain like this. It's much more than that. Unto these devils, gain is popular opinion using crowd manipulation as one of their tactics, and gaslighting, okay? Gain to these coadjutors is what? Public opinion. Taking people away from the truth to uh, draw disciples after them, to cause discord and division among brethren, okay? That is gain to these people. And unto them, gain, that kind of gain to them is what? They say that is godliness, See how different we are? But yet, they're grouping themselves in with the world because who is the father and God of this world? Of this present world? Satan. Their father is the devil. 
Okay? And of course, Titus, Titus chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving. Oh yeah, they believe in themselves. Yeah, but not the true God of the scriptures. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Like I said, you want to get a Catholic to come out of his cover. Kick Catholics big doctrines. Watch them come out like earwigs coming out of a brick or out of a garden chair. Yeah, and they go all over. And isn't it interesting, earwigs have those annoying little pink pinchers that really can't do anything, just irritate you? Yeah. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, one verse, verse 13. Let's remember. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hey, clock in England, you know, the big clock in England started out so friendly, then trying to defend your uh, brother uh, Beelzebub of Blackpool, then just recently, apparently, um, I made a mistake because I responded to you, but after that, it's like, I put you in the spam, you know, thing and blocked you. But, uh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the dosage there, buddy. <laughs> go back now to Psalm 21 picking up at verse 9 thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger the time of Jacob's trouble the Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them amen all you coadjutors working for the Vatican you devils you're going to burn you're going to burn you're going to burn Yes. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth. Amen. This is your hour in the power of darkness. But your fruit, you devils, ain't going to last that long. Especially during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Verses 11 on to verse 20. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not... And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust. And unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. See, they trusted in an actual building in the Old Testament, but not in the one who occupied the building. Does that sound familiar to today? These Christians, they trust that going to a building makes them right in God's eyes. Uh, the Catholic, because they worship flesh and eat a cookie, that's how they get Christ. An outer adornment to these people. Something that they can put on like a t-shirt, a pair of spectacles, or even a, a wedding garment. That's supposed to show that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. When someone has made their choice, and are knowingly, openly, actively serving Satan, made their choice, given themselves over to Satan. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. The only thing you can do is, if you're going to pray for them, Lord, may your judgment be upon them. And maybe in that judgment, maybe smack them out of it. But as I've seen with these coadjutors who work for the Vatican, you might as well be in hell already with the door shut. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? Do you not see? Have you eyes to see? The children gather wood. And the fire, fathers kindle the fire. Mm. The children gather wood. How many people do you know make idols of their children? You know, living vicariously through their children? See, I don't have kids. I can't have kids. Okay? So I don't know what that's like. Okay? But what I've seen, I've seen a lot of parents who turn their children into little idols. The children gather the wood and the fathers kindle the fire. Kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the Roman Catholic Mary, the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings onto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. And here's the whole thing. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? There are some out there who truly believe what they're saying. And they're devils working for the Vatican. Others are just disputatious. Others agents sent to throw people off and whatnot. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? And God is not the author of confusion. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall be burnt, and shall not be quenched. Just like similar to how it's going to be during the time of Jacob's trouble. Ezekiel chapter 8. And, I, and this very meat, very meat. Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, in mine house, excuse me, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward fire, and from his loins even upward, beg your pardon, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy. Hmm. The image of jealousy. What is that image? Hmm. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north, 
So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, and behold, northward, at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. When you study God's word, when the spirit of truth lead you, guide you into all truth, according to the scriptures, and you learn the truth of things through the scriptures, and you see all these abominations, wow! And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now through the wall. Digging through the wall, meaning hidden. So you have to dig to find the truth of certain things, okay? And when I had digged in the wall, behold the door. And he said unto me, go in. And behold the wicked abominations that they do here. You know, secret societies doing things in secret. So I went in and saw... And behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel betrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, the ancient old men, who ought to be teaching the younger generation. But as we have already saw, the children gather the wood and the fathers start the fires. Yeah. Children are their oppressors, and women shall rule over them. Hello? And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezniah, the son of Shaphan, with him, with every man, his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Kind of like the incense that goes up when you see the Catholic ceremonies, right? Rituals, I should say. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Greater than that? Oh, yeah. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Look up the story of Tammuz and note certain dates that correlate onto Tammuz. Let's continue. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, turned their back toward God. The, signif the signification of that. Turn their backs on the Lord. And their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun. Toward the east. The sun. Worshipped the cookie. Worshipped Baal. The god of Catholicism who is Satan. You're all a bunch of Catholics. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Oh, oh yeah. Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Oh yeah! That's what these Catholics do. And have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. 
<laughs> this is your best life now there, guys. Live it up. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. You live your life serving Satan in the Vatican, the Jesuit order, and then you think like your good buddy Constantine that on your deathbed you're going to repent and go to heaven. Dude, not only are you deceived, you're stupid too. Back to Psalm 21, verse 12. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. When the Lord stands up against you, what are you going to do, tough guy? <laughs> Be thou exalted, O Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Psalm 23. Brethren, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. How can a rod and staff comfort you? Um, for those he love, he rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And I can testify to that. See, they're using manipulation tactics to draw people, you know, personally against me. But yet, thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 46. Then we will be done. Psalm 46, verses 8 unto verse 11. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Father, ah, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Excuse me. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Incidentally, when it comes to the word heathen, beware of the definition that is in Webster's 1828 dictionary because our good friend Mr. Webster attributes the one God, worship of one God unto the Mohammedans. So, I mean, you look up the definition on your, on your own time, but um, so basically if someone were to read that, someone who was unlearned or something saying like, well, Muslims and Christians worship the same God? I, rabbit trail. I use Webster's. I like Webster's. It's the best one, in my opinion. Uh, for help with uh, words in the scripture, besides the scripture itself, which has its own dictionary. But uh, Webster's Dictionary is not infallible. It's very fallible. Just keep that in mind. Rabbit trail. Sorry about that. Let's read that again. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob. It's our refuge. Shilah. And who's your refuge, Catholic? 
Going to go to your little Jesuit priest. Hmm? Going to drink the wine. Going to eat a cookie. Don't choke on that cookie. I've heard that they are very dry. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. We don't know what the extent of these doubles are going to do because the month isn't over yet. But also keep in mind, brethren, that um, 2022 is going to be quite a year. Quite a year. And thank you, dear brother, for lighting a fire underneath my buttocks this morning. Ooh, got my blood up uh, pumping this morning. I'll tell you what, brother. But um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, as I had mentioned in the previous video, with the making of this video, unless the Lord stirs something like he did this morning, um, I will be taking from this Friday on to the 31st off. But not really. I'll be, you know, putting notes together and stuff because um, I'm going to take this week from Friday to Friday. And the next video, Lord willing, unless the Lord stirs something, the next video that will come will be the year in review video on December 31st, uh, the last day of this year of 2021. 20, uh, uh, that is what I want. What the Lord wants is something else. Okay. But that's going to be it for this video. And brethren, do keep in mind, um, I there is a backup channel, uh, Least of All Fellowship. That is my backup channel. If anything happens to this channel or something like that, um, check out the other my backup channel, okay? Uh, that that's if you go to that channel, you'll see uh, some stuff from uh, about from Alberto Rivera and stuff like that. But that is a backup channel just in case something happens to this one. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, keep that in mind, okay? But that, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, <laughs> hearken, brethren, and be aware. This is their power in the hour of darkness. And uh, they've turned up the volume and they're... They're, they're just going crazy right now. Does it have something to do with the season? I believe so, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you are one who's lost and has given yourself over to all of this nonsense that's going on, please consider your ways. And I would implore you that you and I reason together about these things. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much, brethren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you so much. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us. Thank you, brethren. Thank you so much. We love you. And uh, like I said, with the completion and upload of this video, I'm going to take... From Friday to Friday, not gonna unless the Lord stirs something. That that could happen quite that could happen. Uh, we'll see. But I plan on, you know, preparing for the year in review video, which will be done on December 31st of this year. So look keep an eye out for that. That will be on December 31st, which is a Friday. So that's gonna be it for this video, brethren. Um, thank you so much. For watching this if you do and um, to you my enemies very entertaining very amusing can't wait to see what you're gonna what kind of trick you're gonna come up ne with next remember I got your playbook the Secreta Monita <laughs> so you're not as smart as you think you are you're not as crafty as you think you are either and those who are of the Church of the Living God will see through your little schoolyard games. But we'll talk more about you guys on December 31st. So, Whether here or somewhere else. So, Till then, pray for one another, brethren. Pray for the sick. Pray for your brethren in other nations. Pray that the Lord use you in whatever capacity that he has put you in. We will see you in the next video.